Quick post fight toss to Lee Selby versus Ricky Burns. Lee Selby defeats Ricky Burns a 12 round majority decision. This fight was really a case of fight of two halves. The first half of this fight we had Lee Selby's back foot boxing, slick movement, good defensive work, great jabbing. The second half we had Ricky Burns' front foot game. We had combination punching. We had a little bit more aggression from Ricky Burns in the second half of the fight. Now, I didn't score this fight, but my general consensus towards the end was that it could have gone either way. You know, if you had Ricky Burns winning this fight, I wouldn't have complained. If you had Lee Selby winning this fight, I wouldn't have complained. If you had a draw, like one of the judges had it, again, I wouldn't have complained. Lee Selby, as he so often does, most of the time when you see Lee Selby fight, he will start off fairly quick. On the back foot, moving, flicking out a jab. But as the rounds tend to progress, he tends to slow down a lot more. He tends to make himself a more stationary target. He does tend to be a lot easier to hit. And we saw that towards the end of this fight. Towards the end of this fight, Ricky Burns was landing a lot more on Lee Selby. He looked more in control there. If this fight had been a 15-rounder, we know who would have been happier to go the other three rounds. It would have been Ricky Burns. My questions going into this fight were, what, what did both guys have left? Because although Lee Selby is the younger guy, he's coming up to weight divisions. You know, he had a hard fight last fight against Omar Douglas. I know he won it, but it was still a tough, tough fight. He took a savage beating against Josh Warrington the fight before. And it kind of made me wonder, you know, how much does Lee Selby have in the tank? The same could be said about Ricky Burns. From what I've seen... I think that, obviously, well, obviously I know Lee Selby had more to tank than Ricky Burns because I think if this was the Ricky Burns of a couple of years ago, he would have won this fight. Obviously, Ricky Burns, I think with him, it's a case of, you know, maybe hanging up the gloves. It's been a great career, fantastic career for Ricky Burns. He's a massive overachiever, three-weight world champion, only one of only three in British history. So, fantastic career for Ricky Burns. Question is, what does Lee Selby have? Well, at lightweight... He has a bit more speed. Speed was very apparent early on in the fight when Lee Selby's legs were fresh. You know, he seemed to be dancing in and out. You know, his speed definitely did seem to cause Ricky Burns a bit of bother in there. Okay? And that's one thing that you would definitely say Lee Selby has at lightweight. In terms of brute force punching power, not necessarily. I don't think Lee Selby... Ha well, Lee Selby's never really shown that anyway. So it's not something that's new. But I think if you were to put him in there against somebody like a Lou Campbell, which is a name I heard get mentioned, then I really would see that fight going pretty badly for Lee Selby. Although I think Lee Selby has more in the tank than Ricky Burns, I don't think he has that much left. And I think if you put him in there with Lou Campbell, and Lou Campbell especially, someone who is a lot taller and ranger than Lee Selby, because what does Lee Selby do in most of his fights? He gets on the back foot. And he uses those long arms he has. And, you know, he really does stay back foot. Using this kind of speed. Using his feints. Using movement. If you take that away. So if you're if you're like someone like a Luke Campbell. You take that away. You know, you really. <sighs> Lee Selby's front foot game is not that good. So I don't think he makes it. Very, I don't think he's very good at chasing a target down. So I don't think necessarily that Lee Selby versus Luke Campbell now it might be I might be proven wrong could be a great fight but I think that would be a fight that Luke Campbell would be wanting and I think it's a fight that Luke Campbell would feel very confident in winning in terms of some of the champions out there obviously we've Lomachenko Comier you know we've got guys like Devin Haney all them got Devin Haney be actually a, a very interesting fight for Luke. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight actually you know I'd make Haney favorite but I'd be intrigued about that that'd be a fight that would really intrigue me would be Devin Haney versus Lee Selby I'd be very keen to see how that goes one other question I had about Lee Selby in this fight was how would the cut go? Because as we know, he was cut very badly against Josh Warrington and that cut actually open back up again in February when he fought Omar Douglas. I was wondering would it reopen again? Obviously, we're in October now, so he's had about seven, eight months. So, no fear that cut opening up in this fight. So, in terms of Lee Selby moving forward, those are kind of the options he has at the end of the day. I don't want to dis sound disrespectful to Lee Selby, but, you know... He did, when he was fair featherweight champion, he didn't fight the greatest opposition. You know, when he finally fought someone like a Josh Warrington, who at the time wasn't thought of as being very good, he was just overwhelmed. And again, guys like Devin Haney, people like that, it's going to be very difficult to get wins over them, personally, I think, from Lee Selby. He could prove me wrong. You know, that's boxing at the end of the day. But I think that, you know, Lee Selby, I think 
he's in the twilight of his career at this stage. And that, that's just my thoughts on this. And, you know, that's what I got to say on this. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down below. If you liked it, please leave your thoughts down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, as always, I will talk to you after.